Last time we talked about several different uh, methods for calculating electronic band structure using commercial computer codes. Uh, the, these are based on tight binding approximation, cellular method, augmented plane wave method, pseudo-potential method, etc. And at the same time, on the experimental side, there are powerful techniques to measure uh, Fermi surfaces like De Haas von Alphen effect, Shubnikov De Haas effect, etc. Uh, so um, now we want to concentrate on the tight binding approximation because it gives us a nice um, insight into these uh, electronic band structure calculations. So now we have a periodic crystal potential, as you can see here, this is the uh, electron potential. Uh, the potential well is centered around uh, each ion at locations Rj, Rj minus 1, Rj plus 1, etc. Um, and we're concentrating on an energy level, so this could be a low-lying orbital of the electron, like the S uh, state, and there is a maximum value, Vmax. So we see that the wave, electronic wave function is uh, centered around the, um, the ion and it decays quite rapidly as we go away uh, from the, uh, the ion. And in the tight binding approximation, these atomic orbitals will be replaced by a tight binding wave function which will be in the block form. So uh, the effect of the ionic potentials will be to uh, modify these wave functions in, uh, to have a, a black form. Now we see that these ionic potentials are strong, ex especially for these low-lying uh, electron orbitals. And when an electron is captured by an ion during its motion through the lattice, it remains there for a long time before leaking or tunneling out. So that's the idea of tight binding approximation. It is true for low-lying energy levels, epsilon should be much less than V max. The captured electron orbits primarily around a single ion. It's uninfluenced by others. Uh, that's because of the fact that this uh, wave function decays rapidly as we go away from the ion. And these are true for low-lying narrow band orbitals like 3D bands, valence bands of diamond-like and inert gas crystals uh, rather than conduction electrons themselves. So this is really uh, good for low-lying uh, narrowband orbitals. Now, uh, let's consider an isolated atom. It has an orbital that's an S state. So we show the wave function phi of S as a function of R. And there's the potential U of R. This is the potential well the electron sees. And the associated energy with this uh, electron is ES. Now, what we need to do is to find a block-like wave function for the electron in the whole crystal. So it has to have the form sum over J equals 1 to capital N, where N is the number of atoms in the lattice. Rj is the position of the jth atom. So this wave function phi s is centered around the jth atom. So it's uh, as a function of R minus Rj. And uh, with some coefficients Ckj, uh, that we need to consider. Now this uh, wave function phi s r minus rj is at r equals to rj quite large in the neighborhood of rj and that decays rapidly uh, at the neighboring sites rj minus 1 and rj plus 1 as you can see here. Now uh, the wave function that I'm going to suggest uh, to have this block form is uh, basically 1 over square root capital N sum j equals 1 to capital N e to the i k dot r j phi s of r minus r j. So n was the number of atoms in the lattice and so 1 over square root n is my normalization constant and when I add uh, in order to check the validity of this wave function, when I add a direct lattice translation vector capital R, I'm going to get e to the i k dot capital R, uh, e to the i k dot R j minus capital R by s of R plus capital R minus R j. So e to the i k dot the capital R is out of the 
um, summation. So I get sum over j equals 1 to n e to the i k dot r j minus capital R and phi s of r minus uh, r j minus r. So that means uh, basically I have e to the i k dot r times uh, sum 1 over square root n j equals 1 to n e to the i k dot r j minus r by s of r minus r j minus r. So this is basically uh, in the same form as my uh, wave function that I introduced. So this is uh, e to the i k dot r uh, times psi k of r. So this basically says that I have uh, obtained the same uh, wave function uh, in the in the parentheses and uh, so if you replace uh, rj minus capital R with rj basically that it has the same uh, form so uh, the wave function it just gains a, a phase here e to the ik dot r when I have a, a translation by capital R therefore this satisfies the block condition so remember that this is the form of the wave function in the uh, block condition so that uh, absolute square of psi uh, is periodic uh, so um, the the phase factor just absolute value gives me one so this is going to be a, a, an oscillatory probability of finding the electron at uh, position r so uh, as i travel in the lattice so therefore this satisfies the block condition now near the center of the jade ion when r is, is close to rj, e to the i k dot rj is going to become uh, 1. And uh, so we, we're going to have the wave function reducing to e to the i k dot rj by s of r minus rj. So r is equal to rj. Uh, so uh, that's basically e to the uh, rj is... Uh, so this is going to be uh, phi s of r minus rj. So the wave function basically will behave uh, like uh, the the orbital itself because the con the uh, the other contributions are negligible. So the wave function basically blows up in this neighborhood, uh, and um, we're going to obtain uh, the wave function that is almost the s orbital so the orbital behaves more like an atomic orbital in the neighborhood of the uh, jade atom <coughs> and uh, the wave function psi k of r in conclusion satisfies the block theorem and the basic assumption of the tight binding model therefore it's a suitable choice so the wave function is behaving like the atomic orbital close to the uh, the atom and as I go away from the atom, it decays quite rapidly. It satisfies the block condition when I translate by a let direct lattice vector capital R. I just gain a phase e to the i k dot capital R. So uh, this basically sets up the tight binding approximation. We have the periodic crystal potential, the atomic orbitals uh, centered around each ion, and the, and the tight binding wave function, which is basically uh, in the block form uh, for these atomic orbitals. So the effect of the crystal potential, so, uh, so the, the, the effect of bringing the isolated atoms together is to form these energy bands uh, due to this um, block-like uh, uh, wave function uh, formation. And uh, the electrons have a low probability of tunneling out, so uh, they're basically captured by these ions and uh, I have found the a proper form for this wave function 1 over square root n sum j equals 1 to capital N e to the i k dot r j phi s of r minus r j I have shown that this wave function satisfies the block condition and around the uh, the ion when I'm centered at the ion it pretty much reduces to the atomic orbital phi s